Have I ever told you guys how much I hate rotoscoping? If you don't know what rotoscoping is, it's when you isolate a section of your clip so that you can put stuff behind it. I talked about it in my last After Effects video, which you guys seem to have really liked. Typically it is done with masking. There's a few ways to do it. You can either draw a mask around the whole subject or you can draw and track masks around portions of your subject. And then within like the last five, six years, maybe After Effects introduced the rotoscope brush, which essentially just allows you to paint out the thing you want to rotoscope and then the software would automatically track your subject. It's been super handy, but sometimes it doesn't work as well as you want it to. But recently, After Effects has released the Rotoscope Brush 2 available in the beta software. I have seen some pretty insane results with this tool. It now uses AI to analyze your image and try and track your subject better. Previously, it would just look at pixel movement, but now it seems like they're introducing like an image recognition. At least that's what it seems like. Anyways, I wanna give this thing a shot and see if it works as well as the internet tells me. The only problem, is I don't have any footage. So I thought, why don't we make a VFX video using this new tool? Now, the hardest part with VFX is coming up with the idea. This right here is one of my favorite VFX videos I've ever made. I just think it turned out really well and looks so clean. So I thought, why don't we try and recreate this video? I remember when I made this video, there was so much tedious masking that happened and it took me hours to mask out my hand. So I thought, why don't we try and recreate this video with the updated Rotobrush 2.0? It's my friend, Jesse. Hey. He's the only guy I know with the soccer ball. Yep, only person in Canada too, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. No problem, I appreciate man. your uh, your soccer skills. Um, Got a favorite soccer team? Uh, Arsenal. London's red. All right, what he said? Yeah, London's red. Two one. All right, we are back. You guys saw that footage. Um, there are a couple things that I'm a little bit worried about. I'm pretty sure we can find some workarounds though. That's the VFX life. You're not gonna shoot the perfect video every time. By the way, there is noise everywhere right now. There's so much noise outside today because it's the Saturday, whatever. Fans blowing on the computer. I got this mic out hoping I can keep it close to my mouth to prevent uh, noise. But anyways, just ignore this. I'm gonna screen record and do a little live edit. You guys are always asking me to edit and do tutorials. So here we go. All right, so let's take a look at our footage. Um, so our first layer here is the throw, looks good. Next layer is the kick, perfect, no problems there. Third clip is my hand. So let's go over some of the potential issues. The biggest one here is the throw doesn't come out very far. I think when I was shooting, I should have been paying more attention to where everything was happening. It needed to be like more out here, not over here, uh, because everything else lines up on like this tree here. So that's the first problem, but I think that's an easy fix. I'm just gonna mask out the ball and literally move it. And then the next problem is shadows. Unfortunately, we did not have overcast, so we had some pretty harsh shadows and it was the evening. So the shadows are long and dark. I'm hoping that my hand will cover up a bit and then I might have to work some magic to put in some fake shadows. All right, and then number three, this is our the third layer here. We got the hand. This is where we're gonna actually use the Roto Brush 2. I'm hoping that it will track my hand pretty well. I do expect it not to work perfectly considering it is um, a blurry hand moving across the screen. Um, and I don't think that it was designed really for that. I think it was more designed for like people recognition. Uh, but that being said, um, it's a static background. Hopefully it'll understand that that is a hand moving and can rotoscope it out. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start with the roto? Cause that's what you're here for. And by the way, we are on the After Effects beta. Uh, so I'm just gonna select the layer, go up to our roto brush tool, double click on my layer, um, go into the control panel here and I'm just gonna click and undo to add the effect. I noticed the version we are on 2.0, that's good. Um, and I've heard that you wanna put it on best quality. All right, let's start painting. So I'm just gonna do good rough paint here. I'm good, now I'm gonna hold down Alt and get in between my fingers here, cut out the grass, uh, this hole between my hands. I've heard that the first brush is the most important, and or sorry, the first frame that you brush out is the most important. So I'm gonna keep that in mind right now. I might have to mess with the settings, but for now I think that kinda 
that should give the software a bit of an idea of what is the hand. Now I'm also going to just draw a red line around everything, hoping that that'll do something. I don't know. And why don't we go along here with the refine brush? Anyways, let's just hit zero on the number pad and see what happens. I'm waiting. Oh. Okay. So immediately the mask picked up that my hand left frame and came back in. So that's pretty good. Maybe I shouldn't have done that refine edge tool. Okay. Not bad. Yeah, I expected that the blurry parts of my hand were gonna get cut out. Luckily in this scenario, um, because we're going to put the hand exactly where the hand is anyways, the roto doesn't need to be perfect here. Like this could have been done with a good mask, but my thought was if I need to reposition the hand, a good roto is going to be super helpful. But in this case, I don't think I'm going to. So it's looking pretty good. It's quicker than the old roto and seems to be a lot more reliable. I think they've done a lot more than just this new uh, image recognition AI thing. I'm honestly probably not even using this tool correctly to its capacity, but doing the job right now. Yeah, I'm honestly more impressed at the smoothness because I found before that it's just so buggy. Now that being said, I'm usually working on red footage, which is a lot heavier in After Effects. It'll play back smooth, but then once you start doing effects, it can really chug. Like right here, that's looking real clean up until there. All right, that's looking good. It's not really liking these couple frames, but uh, I think that's understandable. Cool, uh, let's freeze that, I think. When you freeze your roto brush, it, uh, it prevents any more analyzing of those frames. Uh, so now I'm pretty sure we can still affect all the uh, properties, but it's not gonna try and reanalyze your pixels. Okay, like that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, let's just mess around with some of these settings though. I'm gonna add a bit of a feather, feather and edge shift. It's gonna blend with the background anyways. I pull this up, it's going to blend very well. So I just wanna get rid of any mistakes, go through maybe. I'm gonna speed through the next portion of this because honestly, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So I'm gonna mess around with it and get it to a place where, uh, where I like. And then we're gonna together go through the rest of this edit. Okay, that's looking a lot more clean. I'm just gonna freeze this again. All right, that's looking solid. So it's just this balance of messing with your properties, but then also uh, readjusting your rotoscope and going back and forth between the two. We're really putting this new Rotorbrush 2.0 through its paces right now. Whoa, what is going on there? Again, I think if we did this with um, a person, like a full body person, it would make a big difference. But what just happened? That just fell apart. Okay, clearly I must have done something wrong. It's like I tried to adjust like three or four frames and then the rest of the animation was just like, yeah, no, I'm good. Well, that's annoying. What is going on? Like everything was fine and then it was, it just fell apart. I might just have to start over. This is rough. It's weird, it'll like process, but then as soon as I freeze, it all falls apart. I think I'm gonna also mask out that one part that uh, wasn't looking too hot. I'm gonna duplicate my hand and then um, delete the rotor brush. And then just on the tip of my finger here where it gets all blurry, put a mask. And then that'll clean that up because the background's good too. So I'm just manually adjusting my roto here with a masked layer. I think the hand turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We can work with that. So that's probably all the roto brush I'll use in this edit. Um, now I'm just gonna finish up the rest of this VFX video. Uh, you can follow along or you can just jump to the conclusion at the end, whatever, up to you. So the, now our next problem, let me just hide the hand cause that's gonna be annoying. Our next problem is the ball. I want it to be over here. So I'm going to get a, uh, just a quick circle mask and do a mask there. I'm gonna put it on none because it's a lot easier to work with when you're not cutting stuff out. I'm gonna just do a general mask and then I'll probably use the uh, extend mask setting. I think that's what it's called, whatever. I'm just gonna do a quick position track here. So I'm gonna go uh, maybe like three or four frames. I guess I forgot to put one on the first one. That's okay, just come back, adjust the middle. I always do the, the peak of the, the motion. That's handy. Do the middle again, come down to here. And then there, cool. That's 
probably looking pretty good. Now I just want that ball to be as center as possible uh, so that when I use my subtract extend mask, it should be pretty close. Pull up our mask settings, uh, mask expansion, that's what it's called. Now I'm gonna also probably mess around with this a bit. And by mess around, I mean I'm going to keyframe it. So it's not gonna be the exact same extension every time, just because the ball gets a little tiny bit smaller, as you can see here. So I want that extension to be a, a little bit less. We do a bit less feather, like 15. Okay, let's see how that looks over top of some footage. Actually, I'm just gonna rename these layers before I get mixed up. This will actually be called ball. Sorry, my camera stopped recording at 30 minutes. Um, I'm not sure where I left off, but I've masked the ball, and now I'm just gonna try and change the position of the ball and see if I can get it more over here. Let's see if this looks natural. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to mess around a bit more. Yeah, that looks fine. Boom, perfect. We can tweak that a little bit after. Okay, um, now we just gotta get rid of the other ball. So this should be pretty easy, actually. This is the same method I used in the tennis ball video. What I'm gonna do is use the clone stamp tool, double click on my footage. I'm gonna get a real big brush for this one. I'm gonna change my frame. I'm gonna go alt click, come back, click. Oh, okay, I gotta change some other settings now. I want full hardness more frames. Let's alt click here. Come back. The reason why we can get away with all hardness is because there's practically no motion in any of this footage, or at least in the camera shot, I should say. If you don't know what I'm doing here, you should check out my tools for After Effects magic, um, where I talked about these tools. So now we got ball disappearing. Um, so I'm still sampling from that one frame and it's a one-to-one -one sample, like right, right where my cursor is, it's just taking the information from that frame. And I'm able to get away with quite a bit here. Now we're gonna run into issues as soon as this ball touches the shadow. Let's see if I can get away shadow manipulation here. Okay, so it, w it worked fine until his shadow left. Uh, so now for the kick, I'm literally gonna do the same thing I did with the throw. I'm just gonna mask around the ball. I'm just gonna probably track it backwards here. Uh, so I'm gonna keyframe the mask path and mask expansion because the ball changes size. Uh, first, I'm just gonna focus on the path. Now the reason why I'm just isolating the ball is because uh, the clouds and trees are moving. So if I were to do a big mask, I might run into some issues. And it honestly, it's not very hard to mask. A object that's moving in a constant direction or motion, right? Because I can predict exactly where it's gonna go. So I can very easily manually track this. But if it was like moving all over the place, then it can be a pain. It's always good to make your keyframes on the peak of the motion. So every time it uh, pretty much comes to a stop. It's a good rough mask. Uh, so let's see those together. So we got the throw, the flick, and the, th yep. Uh, let, let's get the timing out. Okay, so I think the throw, flick, yeah, that's all good. So then there the ball can disappear. And then we transition to the kick, which will be... <laughs> that worked really well. I like that. Now we just gotta get rid of that ball. That's awesome. I really like this. <laughs> I'm so happy how that worked out. Uh, now I just gotta deal with this ball situation and shadow. I'm gonna deal with the shadow too. Now I just gotta get rid of that ball and fix that shadow. So I could probably do this. No, no. My thought was maybe I could get away with like a little zoom. That looks so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awful. I would never do that. It's not really to the standard I would like. All right, forget that. So I was just thinking, if I'm gonna make a VFX video, I should probably put it on like TikTok or something. Hope it's still around by the time I'm done. So I threw it into a nine by 16 composition and it kind of hides the soccer ball thing. So that's not bad at all. Now it would be nice to pan back to the soccer ball. That would be cool. I might be able to hide the ball, at least for the vertical video. Yeah, that cleans that up. But the 16 by nine is still messy here. 
And I want this to change sooner. So this is, I'm just smoothing out my camera movements here. That looks good. I like the 16 by nine better, but I mean, just that ball. But I could probably paint in a few of those frames. So it looks like I was only really able to create a nine by 16 video out of this, which I'm not too upset about that. Um, that's gonna be the most useful for social media right now anyways. Okay, quick update. I put a little bit more time into painting in the shadows and I think I got a result that I'm pretty happy with. Okay, I think we could call that a success. Uh, the video turned out pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Unfortunately, I didn't have a ton of success with the roto brush tool. I think it just wasn't the best scenario for it. I'm sure it is really good if I was rotoscoping out a person, but a moving hand in the foreground didn't seem to work too well. Um, I wish we shot this on an overcast day so we didn't have to deal with the shadows, but that's the reality of VFX. You Sometimes you can't shoot stuff on perfect days. You have to just get it done. And I couldn't shoot a different direction. I had to shoot that direction for my hand. Otherwise my hand would have been shadowed and it wouldn't have looked good. In conclusion, I would say that the Roto Brush 2 is significantly better, and for the most part, it was very smooth. I just had a couple glitches on the way. But that being said, it is the beta version. I'm curious if anything will change in the, the actual release. But regardless, I am excited about new tools that are gonna help me make VFX videos. Uh, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the After Effects content, uh, please let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for the next video. Claire wants you to hit the bell.